I'm going to turn the edge into uh, sort of bevel it and get rid of the cortex. It's the first thing I like to do when I see cracks or cortex on a rock, depending on what I'm making, but for Clovis, for sure, you want that crap off of there. So that's the first thing I do. And if you really turn the edge a long way, when you do it, it doesn't matter. Because they, what they use the strategy a lot of the times is, you can see how I've just beveled that whole edge. If they do that on both sides, then you have a real crisp plane that you can then strike in and shear, you know, knock blades off and really establish your thickness early. So. And a problem like this, when it's a really square edge here, this is too steep an angle really to drive in without hinging. So I'll have to take that angle down. I usually work from one side to the other. There's a little crack right there. Actually won't hurt us. And come out from underneath it. And there's a, see this crack right here, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> go ahead and take off a little bit of, and blending. Now this is what flit napping is pretty much all about, is these little blending flakes to set up your edge. It just looks like I'm just brushing the edge and not really giving much thought, but the angle is well established and I'm holding it firm because I want those flakes to come off fairly clean. I mean if there's a little booger in there somewhere it's alright, but establishing those blending flakes to set up your platform is really, that's, that's more tricky than the main strikes to remove the large flakes. And it's pretty crucial. Okay, now that we did that, we can use this other smaller abrader, and I'm using it just because I can get my hand around it. <coughs> it's sandstone also. And I'll just go ahead and give that edge a good abrasion. Now there's a few spots I can strike. Okay, there's a, another little flaw in that stone, but we didn't hurt anything. Kind of getting rid of it. Okay. Now, one thing I like to do, we had that big beveled edge. And as, I, as I'm as i working down, I don't know if you can see this, see how this used to be beveled and straight down, and I just took this flake off here. Well, for the next flake, a lot of times what I like to do is come back with another little percussion flake here, just so I can move that over and, and re-grind it. That lowers the edge, and it really makes a good platform. So sometimes I do that just by going with the abrader like this and giving it a good scrunch. I'm make sure it's really ground. And then there's another seam. There's this, I don't know if you can see it, there's that seam here. So this is just going to be blending that out. Okay. Now there's a... Uh, same thing like I did before. Come back and... I'm going to try to tap the rest of this crack out. This raw chart loves hammer stones. It just gives that nice crisp little sound when it breaks, which is just so nice to hear, and it's got a nice little feel to it, too. <clears throat> okay. Ding, 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 ding. I'm going to use this smaller hammer stone. And I'm doing these little blending flakes sometimes too. Now these are it's thickening the edge and making it even and smooth and blending with these little flakes. Those little flakes that like that are so crucial. They're really what napping is about, not that wump and huge hits. Getting everything right to do those is, is the most important thing and people should spend time on. One thing I see people do a lot when they're napping they use coarse abraders or any kind of abrader and they're constantly, they think that they should grind a lot so they're, they're going along their edge and they're doing a whole lot of grinding which is fine <clears throat> but it's only fine if everything's ready to hit after you do that. What happens is if you if you dull the edge in a lot of areas where you don't plan on removing flakes or the platforms aren't quite right and then you have to fix it well then doing all that blending and shaping of your platforms to fix it is even harder because the edge is so dull then you have to reflake it and do it again so 
My theory is uh, only a braid what you plan on hitting. And we'll just go in from the base here and then through that little cracked area. Now here's an area where it's really common to get reverse hinges. You can strike it if you're, if you're holding it tight in the middle like this and you hit it. A lot of times the flake will go where the, your support ends and it'll curl and wrap up through there. So a lot of times when I have a lot of mass in the biface, I like to hold it pretty loose in the hand like this and just knock the flake off. And that way I'm not applying pressure and it doesn't have that opportunity to reverse hinge because it wouldn't, those flakes can expand into surfaces in weird areas and teeny little flakes can, can reverse hinge on you where you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect it and it's really aggravating so that's a method to avoid it. Now of course as the preform loses mass, if you were like fluting, for example, later on and you wanted to hold it that way, it's not as practical because there's not enough mass in the preform to hold it stable while you hit it. And it ends up just flopping around too much. Okay, I'm going to use this beveled edge and flake down now and then we'll end up turning it and doing the same thing on the other side. We're sort of working in a turtleback sort of way. And on something like a Clovis, you can afford to lose a lot of width. I mean, they're not really wide points, so you can... You can use a, waste a lot of width early and try to get that cross section thinned down. And at the same time, if you were a Clovis man, produce sizable and usable flakes. So more blending flakes to turn this edge back over. Where am I at right now? Eight minutes. rock. Okay. I'm going to have to lose a little bit of length here. <coughs> I shouldn't be napping inside. I've been doing a little bit. It's raining outside right now and if the lighting isn't right I figured you guys wouldn't be able to see. But this dust is... These hammer stones put off an awful lot of dust and I don't think it's as harmful as breathing in the, the silica. It's more like driving on a dusty country road all day, but still not good to breathe. Okay. I'm using these little brushing strikes to turn the edge. We're sort of turtle humping it now the other way so we can rapidly thin it down. Let's work in on a corner here. A lot of times I cut myself in braiding because I'm knocking off little pressure flakes. We're going to do the same thing off this corner. Try to just knock part of this back side off. The platform is a little high, so I'm going to try to hit it a little crisper. There's a little crack there. I'm going to regrind. If there's still some platform there, if you miss or whatever, that was a good idea. Regrind. I'm actually going to step over here first. Yeah, see there's another little seam in there. Now what I'll do is that same strategy I did back before on the edge, where I knocked the flake off here. Now I'm going to come back here and knock this material down and help lower that a little bit more and isolate it. I hope you guys can see this and I'm not hitting the braider all in the way. Okay, now that's a good stout platform. With these big hammer stone platforms, you have to grind the piss out of them. And sometimes like, you feel it when you give it a little brush and you still didn't grind it enough. 